Bonk. Bonk. <laughs> Bonk. Bonk. Is that what? Oh dear, oh dear. Come on, vanish, vanish. Then I can do my intro. Ah, uh, it's gone. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to uh, Baltic Star After Hours. We're here in our most comfortable uh, booth on the Baltic Star Lounge. I did suggest people should grab their finest claret, but uh, I've gone for a uh, Pinot Noir this evening. How about you, Ben? I, I have a Shiraz, um, ah. which I, I go for quite often. I feel we've both gone down the sort of the summerier route with regards to mm. red wines this evening. It feels right. It's quite mm. warm here um, in Faversham a bit. Uh, we had a storm last night, but it didn't break the the humidity, so it's still quite warm, which is nice. I mustn't complain about the warmth. Winter's long enough. But <laughs> but I say that that's all theoretical because we're up here in space, of course, in the Baltic Star. Yeah, but all we can say is that whoever's responsible for the air conditioning, and we'll be getting to that later, <laughs> has yes. clearly fallen very, very short of expectations. <laughs> oh, yeah, so I've got a couple of uh, prime suspects for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that haven't joined us on a Thursday before, or joined us at all, actually, my name is Luke. I'm in the bottom right. I've just frozen on the video, but when I come back, hello, there I am. Yes. And... Uh, Next to me in uh, the, the plush red corner is our uh, GM extraordinaire, Ben. And um, on a Thursday, we um, don't live play. Live plays on Friday. At 10, oh, I've got to update that. It's 10.30, not 10. Um, tonight, we just chat about things. Generally, we chat about um, the adventure, or we chat about Traveller or sci-fi. Um, tonight... I'm quite excited, actually, Ben, because we're digging into our own law, really. We are, yeah. We we don't we don't actually do this very much. Um, partly because there might be campaign spoilers, but also because you know we slowly cover that during the campaign. But we do have quite a tapestry of NPCs that we haven't really discussed in detail. Um, most of what we learnt about them was before we started streaming, so we're going to try and catch up a bit. On some of their backstories. I think some of you that have watched for a while now will have heard us uh, referring to different uh, NPCs throughout it, whether it's Sammy sort of uh, either talking to them or about them or sort of joking about it or something. So who have we had recently on this planet? We've definitely had Sammy. We've had um, Rose. Rose has been down. Mm -hmm. um, Ewan's favourite, of course. Rick. He loves Rick. It turned yeah. out today it's his favourite character. So there you go. He loves Rick. <laughs> a bit, a bit too much, I feel. So they've definitely be, been down, but I think people won't necessarily know who they are, what they do, anything about them. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's start then to help people orient with a little bit of the backstory of the Baltic Star itself so that we can identify those that were sort of there at the beginning and those that came along a bit later. Um, so the original purpose of the Baltic Star was it was a, an old liner, which was fairly trivially converted, not a, not a major shipyard job, um, into a, a sort of research ship, um, by basically uh, painting everything in in beige <laughs> and keeping everybody calm while they were going to be on it for a very, very long time. And, you know, a few minor changes in the lounge to make it more suitable to presenting um, findings and, and creating the option for a symposium or whatever there as they travelled. And it was a scientific research expedition. And the idea was that it was going to go to places that were already known about they already had people living there potentially but actually do a more rigorous examination of the geology the biology on those worlds and accordingly they recruited um some crew to run the ship and some uh you might say expert scientists and researchers um, and those people were going to go on the Baltic Star on this mission. 
And the mission itself didn't last very long because shortly after it set off, the funding was pulled. Um, which I'm sure you remember well. Oh, those pencil neck desk jockeys. <laughs> so, accordingly, um, the 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 travellers, the PCs, made a an executive decision, one might say, um, to pretend that the ship had somehow vested to them, and they would now try and use it as a trading and exploring vessel of their own and, and carve out their own life. And so far, at least, <laughs> nobody from the original expedition has come and demanded their ship back. I, I, we're firm believers in possession being nine-tenths of the law, I believe, and probably bordering toward ten-tenths. I, I know that's true of Stefan. <laughs> I wasn't aware it was true of all of them. I think, yeah. um, I think Kara would definitely be doing it out of a sense of doing something good, creating a wonderful... Uh, a wonderful place for people to come and sort of stay with us, you know, a community feel. Hmm. I feel. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it has been a fairly eclectic mix. So if we start with, you want to start with the crew before the scientists or the other way around? Uh, oh, let's go crew and then scientists. Crew first. Okay. That, that's fair enough. All right. So um, let's start then. So I don't skip anyone. I'm going to suggest we do this in sort of alphabetical order of first name. Otherwise, we'll miss someone. <laughs> you see what I mean? It's always the case. Oh, there it is. Um, so we're going to start <laughs> with the glorious individual who is Gerg Sutter. Ah, Gerg Sutter. Now, Gerg is the medical officer. And... He is not a particularly impressive human being, it has to be said. Um, I think he was described to you guys as basically a glorified medical student. <laughs> um, oh, poor Gerg. He's, he's very fresh out of, um, um, you know, out of training. Uh, he is not without skills, but he lacks the sort of high-end stuff that you might need. And interestingly, despite how many of your your fellows have ended up um, being wounded and, and, and otherwise imperiled, you've so far, I think I'm right in saying, never brought him off the ship, have you? No, I'm trying to think now. I've just loaded up the old list of uh, that encyclopedia thing I was working on from everything you gave us. Mm. <clears throat> I've got a feeling... He might have come on something, but we never invited him on anything. If that makes <laughs> sense. He's just yeah. an unwanted character. And it's fine. It's loading up. It's going a bit slow today. I'm blaming the storm. Um, I mean, the, the most likely place he'd have come, but I don't think he was one, was uh, your sort of field trip to Earth Park, where you brought down quite a lot of people. Yeah. But I have a vague feeling he wasn't one of them. I oh. think that was Rick and Rose and uh, and Sammy and Johnny. Yeah, I think uh, I think Gerg was part of our first plan to get Serva into Earth Park through nefarious means, sort of sneaking him in. I think he was going to be sort of the ah. next batch of people through the door to sort of yep. get them used to groups of us going in, sort of thing, and sneaking Serva in with one of them sometime. I found out. Gerg Sutter came down to both missions of Tufa, both halves of Tufa. Did he? But that was down to you and not us. That would have been, okay, with, the, yes. been with the squids and yeah. the rats. You're right, squids. Oh. Yeah. 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 yeah I, I, I like Tufa. I, I think that was a fun world to explore. Um, Tufa was good. And I think, although he's not like a biological scientist, I wouldn't be surprised if I'm with a medical officer wanting to be present for sort of an away mission, you know, Star Trek style, or mm. sort of uh, once he's seeing there's living creatures, then we're going back sort of being around for the second bite of the cherry, as it were. So I'm not really surprised he came along. No, it's, it's certainly not um, impossible to imagine him turning up. But yes, I think, 
I think you're right. I think I sort of assigned him to that one because that was still back in the days when you were doing, you know, scientific missions, um, oh, which oh. has been a while now. Those halcyon days of science. Yeah. Ga yes. Gathering samples yeah. from everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But Gerg, Gerg is a, a member of the crew of the Baltic Star. He's one of the, the sort of standing officers on board the ship. Um, and despite his inexperience, he could theoretically be useful for various things um, when you encounter people with injuries, perhaps, which, to be fair, you do have at the moment a couple of injured characters. So it's not impossible that he would be useful. That's, that's true. Stefan's not going to... He's got a lot of getting better to do with time so it'd probably be a yeah. worth a trip to the infirmary when we get back up there i guess yeah i mean stefan and um zoe are both um so are both injured um yes but we can't really talk too much about zoe because um she's um a bit more um plot relevant if you know what i mean yes and she's an awkward She's Zadani, and Zadani are mysterious. Who knows what on earth? You know, they could, they might have seventeen hearts. For all I know, I've never read the, uh, the Alien book, so that's, <laughs> she might grow stronger through injury. You know, who knows? You grow extra heads. Exactly. Yeah. Where, where, wherever, wherever there's a wound, a new arm comes out. You know, I don't know. They're mysterious, creepy creatures. Mm. Okay, so moving on from Gerg. Um, who's the next one we've got? Oh, the next one. This this is another one, actually, you haven't spent a lot of time with. Um, but uh, Kron Sarama. Ah, oh, we haven't. I don't think we've barely spoken to him. Mm. Now, um, because of that, you actually know very, very little about Kron, but he's been a consistent presence on board the Baltic Star um since the um well the the very beginning of the mission he was again a member of the original crew he was uh one of those who was recruited by the um the for the scientific expedition to act as a a regular member of the crew and the, these liners run on a fairly small uh, full-time crew. And Kron is the second officer, the sort of third bridge officer, if you see what I mean. But but he's he's a fairly um, experienced chef. I've just got to check his bio quickly because I don't want to sort of uh, get anything wrong. Okay. He was the most recent of the members of the crew to sign up um, and was assigned specifically by the mission sponsor. The He was chosen by the people who were funding the, the, uh, the original mission. Um, and he's a very experienced, very competent, professional sort of guy. Um, he's one of those people who completely puts you at ease the moment you meet him. He's, uh, think, like a sort of experienced um nco in the military or a or a thoroughly competent um tradesman or professional you know one of those people who if 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 he was your doctor you'd know um as soon as you walked in the room that you were in good hands he'd seen it all before he'd done it all before he was um you know he was a very very safe pair of hands and, and we haven't even bothered talking to him we're idiots well, as soon as we get back, we need to have a little party for Kron Sarama. I, I, I just I looked in the notes and like the first time we met the crew, we chatted with Rachel Axis, who we're going to come on to because yep. uh, she's the the first engineer, and we chatted with the captain slash astrogator. I guess because they felt like the right people. But ah, oh, that is always the case. Always go for that NCO. That he, they're always the one in the know. Oh, now I'm feeling yeah. we've missed out. We need to get on board with him. I'm liking it. Yeah. And and I mean he 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 is um extremely well bedded in with the crew now. He's he's sort of very, very well liked. He's he's one of those people, I suppose, in a small team like this. 
it, even in a very very small team where everybody relies on each other, there's always some, you know, like a go-to guy. Mm-hmm. He'd be one of those people. He'd be the first person you talk to in order to make sure you were doing the right thing or you were approaching something the right way. He's he's got a a very level head on his shoulders. But his background you haven't explored at all. You don't know anything about um, who he is or his um, reasons for signing up with the crew originally or his reasons for sticking around after the mission changed. That is true. Yeah, because to be fair, after the mission changed and we personally as a group of PC, so this is before uh, we started streaming, so anyone watching, a bit of backstory, I guess. Um, after the science mission fell through and the funding fell apart, we sort of almost had the decision as a group, like you said, what we were going to do with the ship. And at the time, we'd just gone into orbit around... Would it be? We were just... We've gone into the space station where we met um, old Boo Pants for the first time. That's on Fess. Yeah, Fess. Where we met old Stinky Fess for the first time. And that's when it was all falling through. And that's when we met Zoe. And Zoe offered us the job. And that was kind of... So we had to sort of do this, transport some of her crew to Kigarisa. But then that's kind of where we split from the Baltic Star for a while. For like in game, it was like a decent amount of time. It was like a few weeks, wasn't it? I think ultimately, oh, so yeah. it, was, it was a double jump, a double jump. So over a month, and um, yeah, we sort of left the crew to transport a couple of passengers around to sort of do what they wanted, really. And none of the crew jumped ship. So yeah, so as far as we know, they totally buy into all our ethoses and viewpoints and our visions, and there will never be any arguments or complaints or any problems whatsoever. Uh, to be fair, you do ply them with an enormous amount of alcohol. <laughs> that's true. I think that's important. Isn't that like a historically proven uh, way of doing things? Yes. Yeah, broadly <laughs> speaking. Especially in the Navy. <laughs> it's it's how you achieve loyalty from your team, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. And if I want loyalty, so, I want it from Cron. That's it. I'm going to tell you, and we need to we need to get him on board as soon as... Get him into more yeah. adventures. So moving on to Rachel, Rachel Axis, who, as you rightly say, is your first engineer. And on a ship this size, that also means effectively a bridge officer. Um, she may be the first engineer, but in practical terms, she's also the XO of the ship. So now, Rachel, you've you spent a bit more time with. I've tried, but... She's not a giver. She's. I've, I've, we've, we've chatted with her. We've invited her for drinks. We've invited her, I think, to come uh, to, like, things. And uh, she's uh, She's not the most um, cheerful character. No. Um, her, her sort of historical um backstory not her personal one but a professional one um she has been an engineer on these kind of liners for years and years and she was the very first person in the same way that um that we've we've already discussed the most the last person to be added to the crew the very first person to be added to the crew was rachel um she was added so early that she was in charge of the the refitting of the ship um the you know the maintenance overhauls and slight tweaks to the design to turn it into the the, the baltic star that we know today um and so she probably knows more about how the ship works and the ins and outs of it than anybody else, which I suspect matters greatly if Rose is trying to hide a cat from you. Um, <laughs> that is true. But also, <laughs> um, she is a you know a very very experienced engineer. She's got years and years on these types of ship, and she she was working on this particular ship for months before anybody else was hired. Um, but as you say, she is a bit 
standoffish. She's not the friendliest of people. Gruff, I think, has been used more than once. I believe. Mm. Yeah. Um, as as far as you've encountered so far, she's always been professional. Yeah. But not exactly. Um, yeah, not exactly the friendliest of characters. I don't think. I think the um, the girls offered her over for a table one evening on jump. I think one of the jumps I sort of suggested there could be some sort of get togethers to see a bit of you know bonding. I don't know, Zoe Zoe does, Rose does, but um Rachel never never really joined them. Or when she did, she sort of sat there and just sat there really. Yeah. Yeah. She's a busy woman. Yes, I, I think it's fair to say she might she might consider her job more important than socialising on board the ship. But I mean so far nothing important has broken on board the ship, so she obviously does something useful. No, exactly. She's very important to have around. Hmm. Yeah. And is, she, is she the one whose astrogation skills we use? Um, she is. Uh, no, not usually. Um, she uh, she does actually have a couple of bridge skills, but they are minor skills. You wouldn't normally use her unless you had to. Got you. Um, you've used um, for various different missions you've used richard and you've used um sammy oh, for good old sammy. of course we use sammy we use sammy whenever we can yeah uh, if in doubt use yeah. sammy that's our motto it's yeah, never absolutely. let us down before uh no i mean she's taken some <laughs> some hits being useful to you but yeah she's she's always been useful there's, there's no argument there she's she's doing all right um so yeah, Rachel is um, a bit standoffish, not the most sociable of people, but she does seem to be, at least as far as you've encountered so far, thoroughly efficient and competent in her job, which is useful when she's your chief engineer, I think. Well, if you want someone to be efficient and not working, it's the chief engineer. Yeah. Um, right, then I I have to say with, with enormous pleasure... <laughs> I now get to introduce the captain of the ship, so to speak. Um, Richard Davis is, I mean, he is obviously the captain of the ship in oh, terms of the fact that he runs the bridge. But he's not the captain of the ship in uh, the way that lots of people would refer to um, the the captain. He's the He's certainly the pilot of the ship. Um, but I think it's fair to say he's, um, he's not been directing where it goes the way a ship's captain often would. I mean, he may be steering it into its berth at a space station, but he, it's been very much the party that have decided, um, where the Baltic star goes and what its mission is. Yeah. We, we get him to call ahead generally. He's, he's sort of a good, I think he's. I think we've uh, worked out before that he's a good person to speak with uh, with whoever's in charge as we're coming into dock or land somewhere. If I remember mm. correctly, we've used him a few times. Yeah, he he's got some social skills. He's got some uh, social points. Actually, you know, he's he's got a reasonable social um, level. Um, he is he's been a, a captain on board these liners for you know these this class of liner um for a long time and he was recruited because he has experience in the type but historically of course he's just been running liners and now he sort of took on this rather i suppose unusual mission for him <laughs> the the scientific expedition um, but he's got the relevant experience. He understands how the ship works. He's competent in in most of the important ways. But he's also happily embraced the the change in circumstances. Uh, it must get boring least. sometimes wandering around with sort of some sort of because the line is not for the wealthiest travellers, is it? When it's doing its ferrying job, it's for sort of. The everyday, it's a bit of a piano ferry, isn't it? So I guess it must be a nice change yeah. from him having to wander around for a week during jump, running into the same old people saying, I hope you're having a lovely time. 
I hope you are enjoying your food. Now I must get back to my mm. my cabin quickly alone. And let's change. I mean, I, I can imagine that the thought of going off on a scientific expedition was probably more enticing to him than the rather more random travels since. Um, yeah. Because he's being used more now as just a pilot and bridge officer. Uh, whereas perhaps there was more more opportunity to try something genuinely different on a scientific trip. But yeah. so far, at least, he hasn't given any indication that he's unhappy. Good, because although we could potentially fly the ship, probably not as well as he could. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to lose him. We don't want him going on strike or leaving. But then we'd be making terrifying rolls every time we tried to dock. I don't want to be doing that. Yeah, he, he is... Um, for all of his, uh, I, I suppose he's not the most interesting um, person of your of your crew, but he has been useful when it comes to technical aspects of flying the ship. Um, and he does have good pilot skills. He does have good astrogation. Uh, now the astrogation, Sammy could easily replace, and there are others on board the ship who have a bit. But your piloting skills, they're not the very best in your crew, even in your PCs, except for him. He's a he's a top notch pilot. Uh, and you kind of need that if you're literally running a starship for a living. It saves a lot of stress on that, for sure. <laughs> he's nice. He's nice. He's never done us wrong. Very pleasant gentleman. Nice yeah. to have around. Yeah. Yes, uh, perhaps a little bit stuffy, but it's not the worst of character traits. We need to get him. Uh, we need to get him on the cognac and uh, and joining in some of our evenings. And he maybe he can lead some toasts and things. He'd enjoy that, I'd imagine. I bet he loves mm -hmm. leading toasts. We need to get him. We need to get him up there on the bar leading the toast. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yes, you could definitely try that. Got so many plans. I need to get my notebook out. So we need to get <laughs> we need to get Kronsarama involved. We need to get Richard Davis making toast on the bar. Okay, this is good. We're building well. All right, I'm now going to break my rule about doing things in alphabetical order because we're going to move on to the the sort of science crew and later additions. Um, and the first one that we should be doing if we're doing if we're going back and doing the alphabetical thing is of course Johnny, but. He's not going to make much sense yet. <laughs> no, <laughs> that is true. Um, so I feel we have to start uh, with Rick. Ah, Ewan's beloved Rick. Yeah. Now, Rick... Rick is one of the more enthusiastic characters, it has to be said. He loves it. Um, yeah, yeah. Rick, um, Rick has a a view of the galaxy which is quite sort of, I suppose, it's optimistic, isn't it? I think so. He's he had the time of his life at Earth Park. He was loving yeah. every minute there. It's like a kid in a sweet shop. <laughs> so, so he was essentially when the scientific mission started. Uh, Rick was the biologist for that mission. Uh, but he was actually one of two biologists. Oh, oh uh, I've been trying were... to forget her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, one of two biologists. Um, so at Dillabrew, where the, where the ship was originally and where the mission was joined, um, Rick Verlo, the reason he signed on to the Baltic Stars scientific mission was because he was very much in love with another biologist and she had signed on. Pallia. And yeah, Pallia. And um, Pallia, unfortunately, did not make it off De La Brew alive. Um, that that didn't go well. 
the the story of that is that um Agnar was just leaving the military after a very distinguished military career and as one of the treats for his um demob he was given a chance to go on a sort of part safari part hunt on the surface of the world and there they encountered a group of large carnivorous lizard-like creatures called moabs and well Palia was determined to be on that on that expedition out onto the surface because she'd never seen one. Oh, we couldn't say no. Well, we she couldn't stop her. her. Couldn't stop her. She was That's an right. eager thing. She was loving it. Yeah. And uh, well, what what are your memories of that actually? Because this, this is a long time ago. This was right back at the start of the campaign. I remember, if I'm remembering it through Kara's eyes. I woke up very hungover the the morning after um, Agnar's uh, party. Mm -hmm. um, dragged myself downstairs to an overly chirpy tour guide who dragged us off through the annoying heat to two fancy kitted out ATVs and two hunky men driving it. And Pallia came with us and all our our PCs came with us. And we bumped along over the rocks and, you know, spilling my coffees until we got to some hunting ground about 14 hours later. Did a bit of hunting. All went wrong when someone jumped out and ran after one and couldn't kill it. Came back in again. And then that night, I think we camped. Next day found some moamps in a cave, went into a cave. But well, they went into a cave. I didn't because um, anti-hunting, right. anti-hunting. Yeah, Ka Kara decided she wanted nothing to do with the um, slaughter of defenseless animals. Quite right. Quite right. They were doing nothing to me. Even when they attacked us later on, I didn't. But uh, mm -hmm. what, what Soraya told me was uh, they all went into the cave. A lot of a rabbit warren of caves. A moamp warren, if you will. And, Indeed. Uh, and uh, they ended up face to face with a couple of moabs, uh, killing both of them as, as they were being attacked back. But sadly, Pallia got a little bit close for someone whose main skill is uh, taking swabs. Mm -hmm. She got swabbed into many bits, which yeah. unfortunately had to be gathered up and put into a black bag. And take them back to uh, dear old Rick. Yes, and that was when you first met Rick. Actually, he was waiting for her return back at the um, at the domed city. It was sad to see how many messages he'd left her over the last few weeks as well. <laughs> yes, yes, he he um it oh, it, Rick. it became clear that the the relationship was not necessarily completely symmetrical. Mm. He was perhaps more obsessed with her than she was with him. Um, and I mean, he was even joking about the extent to which he was obsessed. He, he, he'd ex he explained, I think when you first met him that he was technically a biologist, but because of his obsession with paleo, people referred to him as a paleontologist. Yeah. Oh God. Oh. Yes, I know. It's not a good pun, is it? No. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the groans. Oh. Mm. Uh. Um, but um, but yes, uh, and and that's when you first met him. And you know, I, I think at that point, it was through him, in fact, that you really decided to sign on to the Baltic Star. Yeah, he was the one that gave us the contacts and uh, suggested mm. that we could come along. Absolutely. Yeah. Good old Rick. And since then, I mean, it's it's obviously been months and months of travel since then, and a lot of different worlds. But um, he has, well, for all of his potential personality flaws, and he may have many, he has been an enthusiastic and happy member of the crew whenever given the opportunity to actually 
look at a, an animal or a plant. He's 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 right up there for that. He came with us to two for both times. He's come to Earth Park. It's, they're the times that suit him really. He mm. loves it. I mean, he's he, very excited. He, he might have been even more excited than um, than Agnar about Earth Park. Yeah, that's difficult. Agnar was was yeah. uh, trying to catch them all with his little device, yes. clicking them all off. But but Rick was really enthusiastic about Earth Park. He loved it. Um, yes, I think he'd have happily spent the rest of his life wandering around that forest, the yes. fragrant forest of oh, Earth Park. Wouldn't we, wouldn't we all? Yeah, it's it could be worse. And just outside it, big barbecue pit, Shakespeare oh, being performed. You know, <laughs> oh yes, feeds That's... every part of your senses and your and your your mind and body. That's why we got annual passes. Absolutely. We, yeah. I, I feel we could be losing Rick when we take off later. <laughs> he might just stay. <laughs> he might just, <laughs> he just stay. That's why I got my annual pass. Yeah, I mean, he he is, however, your your sort of chief mission biologist yeah. in essence. Um, but you don't really have a biology mission anymore. So he he's by no means useless, but he is a bit of a specialist where you don't really have that specialised role in the crew. He needs reskilling like Sammy. Uh, yes. Yes, that's probably true. Yeah, Sammy can do more than one thing. Exactly. Um, which brings us to another one of... Well, actually, this is the first... No, we should do Sammy first. Sorry. Let's do Sammy because she was the other one who um, who was part of the science mission from the very beginning. Yeah. Oh, there she is. So we should, we should definitely do do Sammy first, I think, or next, rather. We're, we're way past first, I think. <laughs> I feel. So what, what, why is it that Sammy has become everybody's favourite? It's like how football teams get a cult figure for no real reason. I think I can place where it mainly came from, though. And I think it was uh, Bright Sea Starport. Okay. She came on the two for mission. She was the one that was very keen to jump into the water and swim around in the mid, like with with no equipment. Like, I, I look this big old borehole on a mysterious planet that anything could be in. Let's have a jump in and swim around. Yeah, okay, let's join you. Oh, this wasn't a good idea at all. Um, <laughs> so, and then she came down to Bright Sea because she was part of the underwater expedition there because we were looking at rocks. This is an often forgotten mission in my mind, the Bright Sea mission. We borrowed the submarine and we went down to get some rocks for the mining platform. And uh, she yeah. came for that. So she, but she almost came along without us asking either of those times. So she sort of started worming her way into our consciousness, I guess. Mm. And then when we got to Bright Sea Starport, and Poopy Fess turned up. We didn't know he was Poopy Fess then. We just knew him as a man that uh, we were just trying to find out who he was, really, because he was lurking around. Um, he wanted some minerals tested, didn't he? He wanted to hire yeah. someone for a few days. And we thought, oh, Sammy's good at that. And while, so she started doing the work. And as she was doing it, I think it became more and more clear that he was sinister. And I think that's when the crew, like, they started having shifts so that people would stay in the room while she was doing the work. And then yeah. she came back saying that Fess had tried to invite her out to a night out and things and was trying to, like, make her work for longer. And I think by that very thing, uh, the crew started developing a a concern for her, I guess. You know, keep keep Sammy safe, make sure Sammy's okay. Which is ironic because then she became commando Sammy on the next planet. <laughs> but, but for yes. but for that for that time, I think that's when she became a a, a focal point of the NPC crew. I think. Yes, I mean that that um, that space station you left in a hurry. Mm. Um, but yes, I I do think. From from memory, that must be the time it happened that you suddenly found yourself um, dealing with an NPC who'd become a bit more 
important to the party. Um, partly because she was perhaps a bit more a focus of a plot, but also because she you'd spent more time with her and you'd interacted with her, you know. Definitely. And she didn't have the skills that she's developed over time. She was a literal geological scientist then, as far as we mm. knew. It was only um, when we went to the, uh, what's it called, hang on, DX, uh, DXB1 Alpha, the mysterious planet in the Vift, um, her and Rachel came with us. Um, and I, I can't remember if we requested them or they asked to come or it was seen as a good idea because of Sammy's astro- it was astrogation, I think. We needed yes, Sa- Sammy. Sammy needed to come because of astrogation, and we and needed, needed an engineer. An engineer. Yeah, so they both came, and Sammy joined us. In we sort of had a mission that it was after the first lockdown finished, so we were able to sit in a garden again together. And right. so those sessions, although they were like six or seven hours long, some of those we didn't get very much done because we we're actually enjoying being together again, <laughs> uh, enjoying it a bit yeah. too much. So those missions went on, like one main mission went on weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. It that it was that was the mission of the summer, pretty much, wasn't it? Last year, it almost was. I mean, there there were actual sessions where we assembled and spent six hours together and played exactly no game at all. <laughs> it felt right at the time. It was a... yeah, it did. Yeah, but I think yeah, we, it... we, we, we just ate and drank and chatted. Exactly. <laughs> it was needed after that spring, I think. Mm. Um, but I think that meant that she was in part of the main group as well for like months in our minds. And um, it turned out we ended up having to fire at a lot of sort of zombie-like creatures. And she was front and centre. And I think there was a few occasions where through lucky shots at the time, because her skills were terrible, right? At, at that mm. time, at least, she managed to get some shots in, saved Stefan's life a couple of times rather amusingly. And then, and then I fancy dressed as her at Christmas. Yes, so, that's true. You did, so, you know, as as the biggest as the biggest uh, hero of the crew. So yeah, you know, I think well, that's... It's, it's sort of. I suppose it's automatically a nature of what happens when you roll dice for things. You know, some <laughs> some <laughs> characters early on get a reputation for being a bit impressive because they just rolled a couple of good rolls. <laughs> like totally fluky rolls. Oh, she must be good. Yeah. No, she's just... since, since then, you know, she's she's been rubbish at most things. <laughs> but she's still got this reputation. Exactly. <laughs> Poor woman's been dragged here, there and everywhere. She's yeah. been dragged back onto a... Yeah, we dragged her onto Austin, but that's good because that's a storyline, which we're going to get into in a minute, I would imagine. But yeah. she was involved in shootouts there. She's nearly uh, met her maker a couple of times which Agnes mm. had to save her from. But I think she was part of the... At the time when we had um, two other characters in the... Two other PC characters in the crew, we'd often split the team in the same way just by... Just purely by luck, I guess. So it became the um, the SSS team. Mm. And she was part of... And so she sort of just became part of an acronym team as well. Yeah. So it's like... Yeah. And then when she got injured and went back to the ship, we got Rachel back. But it wasn't for those sort of events. Rachel joined us, but then we were sort of past that sort of bonding, shooty type stuff. Yeah. And she was more in that sort of paperworky, doing a bit of researchy kind of stuff. So she never quite bonded in the same way. Yeah, yeah it didn't have the same um, brothers in arms sense, did it? Yeah, exactly. But, uh, but yes. No, I've become very fond of Sammy as well. I think she's um, she's fun, and uh, and she's always she's always up for a new adventure. I think. Yeah, I think so. And I'd like to point out all all the graphics that I've done are since we since we got to know them mostly. So it's not like we got to know them because of the graphics that were designed or whatever, like Rear Cage no, or Chrono. No, that, that, that's come worth after. pointing out because you've done a whole set of new graphics for the NPCs um, using Hero Forge. That's right, isn't it? Yeah, which Hero Forge, which I just did. We'd I'd done Sammy a while back because she'd started coming on on Osin because she'd been on missions. I did Zoe because she was coming on missions, but everyone else I just did today. So they were literally the pictures on the cards 
were a couple of months ago. I think that's for the website, which I've not really pushed through on too much. But yeah, so it was, it was just purely by recent, just from that. So we in our it's only now I think, especially you, and it's only now that he's seen because a lot I sent to you a while back, but you never yes. saw them. So today was like the first time you and saw the physical manifestation that me and you have seen some of for yeah. a few months now. So yes, okay, and um. Well, the, the next one we have to talk about, and we will come to Austin, obviously, before we finish. Yep. But the next one we have to talk about is the amazing Rose. Ah, uh, Rose. I feel a lot of responsibility towards Rose. Yeah. Yes. So um, you encountered Rose, in, in fact, as part of the mining platform sequence. Um. About the same time, in fact, as you blundered into Anton Fest for the first time. <laughs> it was, yeah, we went, we sort of went down to the service, then up, didn't we? I think we docked, went down, and came back up again, and there was Fest. Yeah. Yes. So Rose, um, she she's had a couple of careers. Um, you might say she's careered from career to career. Yes. Um, when you first met her, she was um, earning her living in the service industries. Yeah, she was on so um, Bright Sea um, is a very watery planet, and uh, Ben told us it's got the the main thing is the big starport in orbit, giving you very beautiful views. Which you pointed out, the starport gives very beautiful views of this almost like almost blue orb with a few patches here and there, a few islands, but most of the work and stuff is done on these mining platforms, which float around on the surface. And um, workers are ferried up and down for, I can't, you said a certain number of months shift at a time sort of thing. They yeah. go down to some huts and they take a lot of subs down to drill for the, the different metals and ores. And then they spend their months there. That's all sent off on ships. Each platform's run by almost like a, like a platform mum or platform dad, kind of like the boss of the platform, aren't they? And uh, it, from what you said, it seems to fall on that person's responsibility to make sure that the crew are kept entertained. Okay. Indeed. And uh, part of that entertainment when we were there was Rose, which uh, Cara immediately... Uh, I don't. I don't know if, if if you even meant for it to be much of a thing, really. But that was something I'd zoned straight in on at that time. Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah. right, let's get Rose off this platform. Yes. Yeah, it isn't um, the world's most glamorous profession, but it is allegedly the world's oldest. Mm -hmm. um, and. Yeah, you you decided essentially. I don't know if rescue is quite the right word, but certainly to give Rose a different opportunity in life. Yeah, she, yeah, she might be she might be enjoying this less in some regards. When we, especially if we get into some scary stuff later on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> at least it was sort of secure down there. Um, Kara paid off the manager of the platform mm -hmm. and threatened her a bit because um, yeah. she'd noticed that there were some irregularities in numbers i think yep so she threatened to like tell the crew that uh the boss was taking more money than she should have i think it was something like that if i remember correctly and then yes. she paid off the crew i look instead of a rose for this time i'm going to give you a couple of thousand credits you know perhaps so bought everyone off and then uh rose came up with us and she's stuck pretty yeah. close. She's stuck pretty close to Kara mostly since I think. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, Kara, I think is. I think it's fair to say she's probably the most easily approachable of the PCs. I, I always think if you met the PCs as a group, you'd sort of be perhaps a little bit wary of Stefan. Mm -hmm. You might even be a little bit in awe of Agnar. Mm -hmm. Soraya, you'd think, 
she's enormous fun but it would take you a while to really be one of her people but i get the feeling car is really quite open and and relaxed when you first meet her yeah i I think it can slide into annoyingly so at times i could imagine after a couple of drinks she's that person (laughs) at the bar that's a little bit annoying but her heart's very much in the right place i think and um she she is one of those people who, after a few drinks, will probably hold her hands well above her head and scream "woo!" <laughs> Woo! Come on, we're going for, we're going for shots. <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> got to dance. <laughs> yeah, come on, or drags, else. drags everyone off. And I was like, no, I just came in for a quiet beer. I'm not having Jägermeister. I'm not dancing. I just 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 leave me alone, car. I do my head in today. <laughs> but then you can't stay mad at it for long. Yes. No, no. I, I think Rose would would certainly Rose would be much more relaxed around the women than the men, um, and Cara in particular would be someone she would she would perceive as as someone a bit like her, someone a bit a bit less formally. Um, rigorously trained and educated, a bit more relaxed and free-spirited, you know. I think so. Um, In fact, the first thing that she did... It's not necessarily true. (laughs) No, because Carol's quite educated, actually. But it's an art art education, so you can sort of hide it a little bit, if need be, to just come across as sort of eclectic. But the first thing we did with Rose was take her up to the starport and it turns out that she actually knew um zoe which was actually a bit of an in for us Mm. because we've been told to approach this person it was quite funny because two of us went about it in different ways cara just took um one of the other one of the others sort of went and started questioning groups of like went up to a group of guys and started carefully questioning them about who their boss is and if there's any interesting stuff going on because we knew we had to meet this person and then Cara and Rose mm. just went to the casino, sat down, and Rose was like, oh, yeah, I know that person. <laughs> that's, that's kind of the person you need to speak to. It's like, hey, excellent. Yeah. So, yeah, so she knows Zoe. Yes. Uh, that's right, yes. Um, she she recognised Zoe immediately. Um, yes, and this was all tied up with... Um, Zoe <coughs> was able to give you a little bit of backstory about Fess, and Fess was um, in the process of Fess. trying to do something arguably untoward with Sammy, and Sammy was becoming increasingly alarmed, not not necessarily as much by Fess as by the way you were reacting to Fess. She was getting nervous about, if if they're that worried, I should probably be worried too. <laughs> Yeah, I think Agnar had a, um, I think um, she slept in his room one night, didn't she, for protection, I think, because he was, they were so, I think she had got edgy about it, and he was very, he'd not gone into full Daddy Agnar mode, but he was still in sort of commanding officer mode, I think, back then, so he took it as his responsibility to make sure she was okay. So Yes. Yeah. It's it's actually... um, to me, it's interesting because this was one of the branch points in the campaign. Yes, yeah, so we were basically um, given who do you want to who do you want to side with? Exactly, yeah, because there there was you, you had no particular reason to trust Zoe any more than you did Fess. No, um, you made some sort of perception rolls, you know, checks to to see how how they were and what you could what you could glean about them. But you you make you picked a side basically, um, and while you absolutely haven't picked the wrong side, you also haven't necessarily picked the right one. If you see what I mean, exactly. I think it wasn't really a wrong or a right. And to be fair, he just he's just a sinister man, and I don't know if it's just how you play it and that, but it always seemed like there was. He wasn't saying what he was thinking. His his mind was moving at a thousand miles an hour and was sort of like plotting this, that, and the other. And I think that's what 
put us off him quite early on and we just had the and I think because we'd bonded with Sammy at that point and he was coming on to her a bit too strong. Yeah. Like the whole protection thing. And then Zoe had said like, you know, he can use his mind tricks. He's sort of part of the Zadani, basically the Zadani SS or something, you know. And he's like part of the Gestapo or something. And so we're like, nah. Yeah, the the Jarek. Yeah. Yeah. Like, nah. That's um, and and she and yeah, as far well, as we it, know, I she's mean, done a runner, but that's all we know. So <laughs> Yes, it, it was it was an interesting thing for me. I was genuinely curious whether or not you'd you'd think we can get an in with this guy by basically throwing Sammy at him and then we can possibly get work and we can get money and all that kind of thing. But you immediately recoiled from him. You thought, no, nah, something's not right here. Yeah, he offered um, us a bit of work. We got a bit of pay out of it. He offered her more, yeah, which would have been a connection through that. But yeah, and I don't feel bad about that because the reaction that you and I had when we met him again on the Geek I just tells us that I think we made the right decision. Two fully grown men, <laughs> <laughs> like made into like babbling idiots, stressed out by a by a, a fantastical character that doesn't even exist. <laughs> just, oh, uh, uh, I don't know what to do. Oh, I don't know what should we do. I feel like it, yeah, he's, he's coming off the page, like reading my mind. <laughs> the 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 thing I I do um, enjoy about Fess actually as an NPC is he's very very clever yes he's not an npc that's powerful because he's got you know a plus two weapon or a or a a super powered you know, jet pack or or a long sword with special magical <laughs> properties his his power is that he's he's bright he's, he's smart he's, he's cunning he's planning and plotting all the time yes and, and that makes him an enormous amount of fun to play. And I'm sure Zoe is as well, but she's never... She's never come across with that... as that darker side of the cunning. The most interesting thing in that regard is last week where she managed to knock the creature down without even touching it, which is the first time our, our guys have actually seen, oh, hang on a second. We know she's so darny, and so, of course, we'd know the the rumours, and we'd know the, you know, everything about it, but she's always been pretty straight up to us, to the point where even she, she even she didn't like the carvings, she was freaking out with the carvings, so she feels more, I don't say human, because that's wrong, she's done, she feels more normal, she feels more legit, I guess, if that makes sense, and she might not, she might be like the a big, bad, you know, kind of character luring us to our Cyronic deaths or something. But do you know what I mean? She's always come across a bit more legit. Who knows? Yeah. I know you must, you, you can't say too much, of course, but. I can't. I, I, we, we really <laughs> should probably move on from Zoe, but you're right. You, you have in the last, just in the last few episodes, seen some, some interactions with her that have uh, broadened her character a little bit for you. Yeah. Yes, uh, which leaves us really with the most recent of the uh, regulars um, who joined the crew um, on Osin. Yes. Ah, oh, bless him. Uh, the estranged but now reunited brother of Sammy Cress. Ah, Johnny. Johnny, Johnny. Little grubby Johnny. His little grubby ways. <laughs> Which uh, we didn't know to start with. We landed on um, Ossim, and he was the first grubby oik with insight to ask questions of, to, to try and find out anything about what was going on. Turns out his name was Johnny. Yeah. Turns out his surname was Chris. I haven't seen his sister in years. Two and two was put mm. together. Yeah. Now, now Johnny had a fairly tragic backstory, um, and blamed Sammy somewhat for that. I mean, yeah, they had to sort of he, break some they overcame stone. it once they reunited. But, but yeah, it was it was a it was a challenging childhood. I think it's fair to say. 
Um, but he proved to be quite useful on Ossin. He was he was a bit of help navigating the politics of the place. Oh, for sure. Um, he was what you might call a very, very low-ranked contractor to the Riftsman's Guild. Um, just an he, occasional employee. He always struck me a bit like... Um, you've watched The Wire, right? I actually haven't, no. Oh. So it's, all, so it's all about like the uh, drug gangs versus the police, especially the first series. It sort of branches out a little bit. The first series, the third series, but then it sort of changes a bit as it goes. But in that, you have like the big, the big cheeses, of course, the main man. Then you've got Idris Elba, who's like his second in command. But that Johnny always felt like the guy that was sat on the sat on the sofa, actually in the ghetto. Who, who sort of has a little bit of power over a couple of people, but he's very low down. And he has to question to some sort of low ranking guy that comes out to sort of take the money and check everything's okay. But he's, he's got a bit of power over like the 14 year olds that are like, you know, grabbing the drag the drugs from the stash and handing out the drugs, but he doesn't have any sort of real power. That's how I felt. Johnny felt, I, I guess. Mm. Yeah. I, I think that's, probably fair enough it's probably true enough um he 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 was a very minor character and as a as originally written he was intended to be an encounter you weren't really supposed to invite him on board the ship oh we invite everyone on board the ship you know that i know that's, that's our biggest you're weakness obviously completely free to do so there is there is no rule that says you can't <laughs> that's just our um, ongoing thing hey do you want to join our ship yeah. No, the, the, the way I had it in my mind, and is just in my mind, um, was that you would you would have a an encounter with him, there would be a reunification with his sister, they would they would have some catharsis, you might learn some information from him, and then it would all be over. <laughs> oh Johnny, and he'd still be there. Oh, yeah. Johnny, in his little life. Yeah. Know, but no, you, you decided to invite him and you were very persuasive, it turns out. And we got him on board with our assassination plan. He bought the bag of guns in case we needed it. Yeah, Jesus. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. One of the he, crew he now. Was, yes, he, he was definitely, you know, a, a pretty good lad, really. Turned out in the end, didn't it? It was a bit rattish to start with, but he definitely came through, I feel. Yeah. And obviously, you've only taken him now one hop. But, yeah. But he, he seems like he's um, settled into the life of the ship a bit, which I is think, which is a good start. I think he was kind of the reason why, well, one of the reasons we didn't take uh, Sammy to Earth Park. It was like, oh, cool, let the two of, I think we actually said, let the two of them mm. do their do their thing. Some brother sister yeah. catching up, I guess. Yes, and and I think that um, that may be that may be something that more will come out of in the future. Uh, just because I didn't have anything planned at the time, it doesn't mean it, it isn't useful to have a relationship like that that you can then, you know, add to the texture of things. No, of course. Um, So, though this is an absolutely shameless plug, but given that we've now effectively come to the end of our of our NPC review, um, on Tuesday I've got um, a behind the screens stream, and one of the things I'm going to be doing is going through the way I write an NPC, um, which is shamelessly ripped off from the way people write screenplay characters. And it's essentially by just writing the answer to a series of about 10 questions uh, for each NPC. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to show people the questions that I use and why I use them. No, am I allowed to watch or is it spoilers? There are absolutely no spoilers. Oh, in it. fact, um, where I've got any kind of examples in there at all, they're ripped from pop culture. They're not from our campaign. Oh, brilliant. Oh, good. Um and I'm going to be telling a couple of um, stories from the olden days of um, of RPGs and 
Yeah, because I'm much older than everyone. All else. right, Granddad, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Boomer. <laughs> Yeah, keep your hair on. Just because you could buy your house and avocados, or the rest of us can't. <laughs> yes, you could buy a house, but nobody had ever heard of a kiwi fruit. <laughs> exactly. And everyone had rickets. <laughs> but you can, we can live in the house with the rickets. <laughs> yes, they were lovely people, Mr. and Mrs. Ricketts. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Ricketts. <laughs> Took, took, three hours, took three hours to open a tin of beans by doing that every single bit. But, you know, it's, it's all right, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, the, 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 the way you open tins was to hit them with knives. It's, you know, a different world. <laughs> a different world. It's the way that a lot of problems were solved back then. I'm glad, oh, God, we, yes. I'm glad we've moved on. Yeah, if you're out at the pub and someone said something you didn't like, it was all fixed bayonets. <laughs> oh, yeah, Faversham was. My goodness. It was a kid, it was like that. Oh, dear. Yeah. How, how things have changed, how things have gentrified around the world. Yeah. So uh, I've, I've got a couple of sort of old stories and old insights and, and things that might be of interest to people. And, and I'm going to be doing something on um, uh, how to structure stories for... Um, for role playing, um, which uh, is that's going to take a while, but I'm doing the first bit, which includes telling you the telling everyone who watches the literal very worst joke in the world ever. I don't, you've told a few. Is it worse than those? Oh God, yes. Oh God. It is by far the worst joke you will have ever heard. I'm, I'm double thinking about watching. To be honest, I don't think my <laughs> mental health can put up with it. <laughs> Uh, yes, and we will see people hopefully tomorrow night for our actual game stream. Yes, so I guess that means I could announce the next four things we've got then. So tomorrow mm. is our live game stream at uh, 10.30. Don't read that corner. It's up there, there. I've got to change that graphic. I meant to do it last week, I think, but I forgot. I'll even Photoshop when we finished. Um, 10.30 tomorrow for episode 18 of Boys in the Baltic Star. We just massacred... A an innocent family of um, sea bats. Blame Agnar, he was the one that started shooting and then tore them to pieces with his very claws. We've just made it back to the surface again, so something uh, magical. It's night, isn't it? It's dark. It's night time. Something magical will happen. It is. Oh, man. So yes. um, I'm going to run and hide. Agnar's got really bad night sight, so I'm just going to run and hide and um, see if he can find me. So that's 10.30 tomorrow. Um Tuesday behind the screens with Ben. That normally rolls from about eleven. Is that? Yeah, it'll be an eleven o'clock kickoff, and um, hopefully it'll be an hour and a bit. I don't know exactly how long. Yeah, last one ran about an hour and ten, didn't it? I think so. Hour and ten, hour and fifteen, hour and twenty, something like that. Something. Uh, it's not ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but if you're if you're interested, come along. And if not, I'm sure we'll have video up that you can watch when you're when you're available. Oh, definitely. We, set, we we always save our videos, and then when the video's about to run out, I give it a nice little pretty screen, and we save it forever in the highlights, and then it'll get bumped to YouTube a, a couple of weeks after that. So it'll live there forever. Um, then next Thursday, we are going to get round to our belated Those Dark Places uh, kickoff. We could do Character Gen in the first episode, episode zero of mm. the... Uh, I'm very excited about that. I think that's going to be brilliant. I'm looking forward to it. Jilly's available again. This is good, so... Next Thursday from eleven, um, I'm going to yep. take I'm going to take the reins for the first time. I've never uh, GM'd such a game before, so of any game yep. speaking, so it should be fun. And I'm looking forward to what these guys think of it. It's a cool. So it's now less than 167 hours away. Oh my goodness, I better stop. And I've already prepped for two weeks ago, but then it fell through. So you know, I'm all, <laughs> I'm, I'm over prepped at this point. I'm like yeah. No, I'm, I'm really really looking forward to that one. I think next next. Thursday will be fantastic. Uh, I'll put the word out again. I think that there are a few people that are wanting to watch it and then we're a bit sort of, ah, shame it didn't happen. So I'll put the word out again for next Thursday. I'll drink to that, Ali, as well. Yeah. It's a, I'll drink mm. to that. It's a dangerous world in a dangerous space where if they last more than a couple of missions, then it's miraculous. To, yes. to be fair, as, as a player, I'm not skilled. So if I make it 15 minutes in, I'm counting it a win. If you can't be skilled, be lucky. <laughs> and, and if you can't be lucky, then I don't know. 
run faster than someone else, I guess. If you can't be lucky, be GM. <laughs> there you go. So that's next Thursday. So we could do the first one of them. And then I'd imagine we'll do that story will start on some Thursdays. I, I, I can't see it being every week. And it depends how long it lasts. They might all die after one or two. It'll go as long as it goes, I guess, right? Yeah. I mean, I we we haven't really gone through it in detail, but I, I think we'll probably intercut episodes with other things and it yeah. would depend on when we're all available, won't it? So exactly. we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes. But I I think it's gonna be really, really interesting to try a completely new game system and one in which I don't have to have nineteen windows open on my laptop in order to understand what's going on. I know you'll be loving it. I'll tell you what, I've got a lot for OBS. I'm I'm ping I'm gonna be pinging here. I've got I'll have paper here, I'll have something else, some dice here, I'll have OBS here. I'll be yeah. my eyes will be like this more than normal. They'll be like, you know, I, I'm literally gonna be in a position where I can have a sheet of paper and a pencil. <laughs> and what and it's one D six as well. One D six. One D six. It's like really this is why I chose it because it's really it's rules light story heavy. And that for me is perfect. That's what I love, rules of light story heavy. So um so that is next Thursday. And then next Friday, of course, we're back to our next live play again. That'll be at eleven as Thursdays are, and then next Friday we'll be back to 10.30 for our next Live Play 19, when we'll have made a million credits, uh, we'll all have become heroes, we'll be back at Earth Park again, uh, riding the Megalodon with a, with a saddle uh, into the sunset uh, for, for magical times. So that's it. Uh, live Play tomorrow, next Tuesday, Behind the Screens with Ben, where he looks at... Uh, how to write NPCs and um, what was the other bit you said? There was two bits, NPCs there, and like you got lots of bits. to it. Oh. I can't remember what they all are now. Oh, it's like it's like um, it's like Big Breakfast or going live. All your sections, I love it. Yeah. So behind there, there's, the screens, there's, there's, there's some weird backstory stuff and there's some um, NPC plotting and character design and some stuff about how to do storytelling um, from real fundamentals and some stuff about. Uh, yeah, there's quirky stuff and mixture of stuff. Well, we're going to try it, see how it works. Maybe everybody will hate it, in which case we probably won't do it again. But if people enjoy it, then we've found something nice. Not, I'm going to I'm gonna tell you everyone loves it, so you've got to keep doing it. Uh, people do love it. People watch last one. People will love this one. You need to, your confidence needs to grow, Ben. You're a wonderful That's man. That's what everyone says skills. about me. I'm too shy and retiring, and I'm not at all outgoing. And I, They just wish I'd talk more. Yeah, yeah I don't. But anyway, uh, <laughs> I joke, I joke. See, Ali's laughing it. Ali will be there. So uh, <laughs> Friday live play, Tuesday behind the screens, Thursday, those dark places, session zero. And f- next Friday is our next, is our episode 19 of Boys in the Baltic Star live play. Yeah. Wow. So hopefully see people tomorrow for the oh. first of those. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I've... The, the opportunities to end this month. I love our life plays. I get very excited about them during the day. And I don't know what's going to happen. Hopefully not more massacres of our, of, uh, of sea, sea bats. We can just, uh, we can live in peace with our fellow creatures and go back to shopping and going to theme bars. That's what I want out of my game. You want another shopping episode? Yeah. I, yeah. No Anton Fess. I don't want any Anton Fess. I don't want any spooky wood thing. I want to wake up and it's all been a dream. And we're going shopping, if that's okay with you. It's not, actually. <laughs> Gas is done, Tom Fess. Fess. Tim. Tim. That's what I want. I want to wake up with, with Tim waking me up with a breakfast platter. I don't want to wake uh-huh. up. I don't, I don't want to let like, Anton Fess looming over me with anger. I want Tim looming over me with a platter. <laughs> that's all i want in life why is it so hard oh anyway yeah. um on that bombshell thank you for watching uh, live or tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon whenever and we will see you friday at ten thirty sharp we start well on a friday uh for a yeah, magical we're on fridays oh we're very good on fridays right have a fantastic evening night day and we will see you on friday thank you everyone and good night. Good night.